the, the mimer is called to understand who Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is. So it brings up a few stories about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. One of the stories it brings up is that the, the, the uh, once there was uh, no rain, and that they went to Rabbi Shimon to pray for rain, and Rabbi Shimon didn't pray for rain. He said, the Pasuk, Ma tovu manayim sheves hachim gam yachad, and he learned Torah and rain came down. And the Rebbe says, what's that got to do with anything? Well, it's an amazing story, but what is it? why does that show something about Rebbe Shimon? He says, well, first of all, there's a story that was before that. That's how the mind starts off. That they, the pupils of Rebbe Shimon used to praise him with these weird, incredible praises, like you praise God. He said, Rebbe Shimon, you are the, you are the Holy Shabbos. You are Shabbat. And he said, Rebbe Shimon, you are the face of the Lord God. It says three times a year you're supposed to go up to the base of Mikdash to, to see God, to see the face of the Lord God. And who is the face of the Lord God? It's Rebbe Shimon. So Rebbe says, why did they praise him with these strange praises? Why? Because by, it's the same thing as like praising God. Rebbe Shimon was so far away from them. <coughs> and uh, his soul was like so great and so amazing. He was perceiving things that they just were totally out. And in order to evoke from Rabbi Shimon these teachings, so they praise them with these praises. The same way as we praise Hashem. When we praise Hashem, we say, Hashem, you are great and you are strong and you are powerful. And that evokes these things from Hashem. Why? Because that's what Hashem decided. Why did Hashem decide? Because He wants a dear of the And He wants us to make this place a holy place anyway. So when we praise Him, it just starts in action what God already set up. So it pushes the button. But the mechanism is already made by Hashem. Same thing is with Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, <coughs> his whole thing is that he wants <coughs> revelation of God in this physical world. Because that's his whole job. So he re revealed this panemius level of his to even the Tanayim. And this panemius level is called Yechira. It's also called Remember? What is that? Eitan. Eitan of the Nesham. Do you remember that? Eitan of the Nesham. Yechida. Yes, right. The, right. Yechida. It's also called Eitan. Eitan. Eitan for the night. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, Nesham Gil, Rabbi Rashbi, uh, he was like so purified that he like reflected from like the Mata and the Mala. From below to above, the 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 gods reflect uh, uh, the His thing was more from above to below. He he reflected. He was like a a television set for Hashem. Yeah, but that's because he was so pure. That's right. Yeah. And also, not, not only was he pure, but he also had the ability. It's like no matter how good of a radio you have, you can't. It won't project pictures. Here, the, the whole, this whole world room is filled with television pictures. It's filled with television waves. But you can't see it. Bring a radio in here. Doesn't help. You can't see it. Bring a heater. Bring a... You know, a huh? But it was more like he was uh, like absolute instead of absolute. Like he, was, he was a terminus the high level here. He was, he was like more like a, if this is a tzila, right? so he's more like absolute. Like, this is Asiya. Yeah, he was like Atsilus and Asiya. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was like Avram Yitzhak Yaakov. He was like a Pav. That's right. He was so tremendously high. It's like Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, but even higher in a way than that. <clears throat> they were just pictures. That's why we say in the morning, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. And why do we say that? We just say the God. The God. There's only one God. How many gods are there? He says, no. Avram, <coughs> he had the way of showing what God was. When you looked at Avram, you saw God. When you looked at Yitzhak, you saw God. You saw, look at Yaakov, you saw God. But each one had their own personality. Yeah. So you saw three different facets of God. You can shine through. Good? Yes. That, and that way, it's not like a television. A television, no matter what television you have, you see the same program. You see exactly the same program. It could be maybe if you have a color television, you have a black and white television, maybe you have a 3D television. Maybe it's, yeah. yeah. And it could be maybe. <coughs> Wait. So it says, so the Rebbe explains why did they pray for Rebbe Shem Bar Yechai and said that he is Shabbos, because Shabbos is just like Rebbe Shem Bar Yechai. On one hand, it's tremendously holy, it's holy on its own, but on the other hand, it shines out to all the days before it and after it, holiness. And also, Shabbos is affected. 
by the people. We have to makadish the Shabbos. Same thing with Rabbi Shimon. He was affected by the people around him. When they praised him, that brought out his holiness. The same thing they praised Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that says three times a year you should see God. You should be seen. All of your males, that they should be seen. The face of the Lord God. Who's the face of the Lord God? Rabbi Shimon says, what does this got to do with anything? Lord is how Hashem is in the lower worlds. God, Hashem, that's the new uh, okay, that's God, that's how Hashem is totally above all the worlds. Rabbi Shem and Bar he had the face of the Lord God, he could unite both of them. He could show this world can also be a holy place. Rabbi Shem and Bar Yochai. Okay, so what do we get up to? Vayesh. You know, to and there is the Hosif. Shit, did, that, bit, in, mitzvahs, the mitzvah, ri'ya. What's the mitzvah of a ri'ya? Seeing. Seeing what? Seeing the face of God. Seeing Going to the face of Mikdash and seeing the face of God and also being seen. It says you saw and you were seen. Yeah. So there was, you saw was from above to below, Hashem, but you also were seen, and it's from below to above. Because God saw you too. So that's that's what Rabbi Shimon united. And then this mitzvah of Ri'iyah, of going up to the base of Mekdash and being seen, Nichlal, his call is included, Kam also, Habas bringing Korban, a sacrifice. That sacrifice was called Olat Ri'ah. Olat Ri'ah. What sacrifice is that? It was a sacrifice that was called an Ola. Yeah. And you had to bring what one uh, was it for? A sheep for the holiday. The, the bring. Oh, yeah, this for the holiday. Just for bring the holiday, right? You had to bring an Ola. So oh, yes, you had to be a Chagiga also. Not Korban Pesach. Huh? No, Korban Pesach was a special. Yeah. That was a special thing. So, in addition to the Ola Bria you had to bring, you also had to bring a Korban Pesach. Actually, you brought Korban Pesach. That's right. Ola, the Tami. Uh, you had to bring a, usually in the same you had to bring an Olas Ria, yeah. and they had to bring that was burnt totally, and then you had to bring a Chagiga, yeah. and that would be eaten. Watch the mic. What's going to be? Uh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's okay. I see it. I see it. I thought for a second, but it's not here, but right. yeah. So it was a little bit tight there. But. <laughs> So, they had to bring an oldest real, they had to bring a sacrifice. Shlamim? No, a shlamim is eaten by the, because that, as far as I know, that was the Chagiga that they had to bring. A shlamim is eaten by the people who bring it. But a, a ola is totally burned in the altar. Yeah. So they had to bring an oldest real. Like it says. Wait, so what, what's the sacrifice you brought on Pesach? And Pesach, they had to bring a Korban Pesach, yeah. they had to bring a, a Ola Shriya, they had to yeah. bring one of this, and they had to bring, oh, I think, a Chagiga. They had to bring a Chagiga, and that was here. Every holiday they had to bring So it's free, so Korban Pesach, 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 Pesach is free, free normally yeah. be two. Uh, at least two. But then, then there was also the communal offerings that were brought by the, uh, for just commemorating the holiday in the base of Middash. That was the, okay, that was the special for right. the holiday. But every, every person, had to bring up an Ola's Ria. Wow. Every person. He had to bring an Ola when it was. Kamoshka, like it says, quote, below Yerau should not, they should not see Panai, my face, Ray come empty handed. Here I go, pencil. Ray come. No, that's. Okay, a little bit. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's Reikam? Reikam re re means empty hand. Same with Matriya Siesha. Meaning, thou gets something out of it as well. What? Meaning, thou gets something out of it as well. What? Lari, Hevel, Lari. No, that's just Yesh. Hevel, Lari. Reik, Reik. Yeah, Reik is just, that's Yesh. So, so, so you sang with the empty hand and they won't leave without yeah. receiving something. What? No. What, 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 what did you say? That sentence means very calm when you say... Oh, I'm a very, very... Uh, what? what? What did you say? <laughs> when you handed, right, does that mean that they will leave 
not empty-handed. They should not come up empty-handed. Come up empty-handed. When you go to the basement, this should be empty-handed. What does it mean empty-handed? You have to be holding it. bring potatoes in your hand? No, you have to bring okay. this all, all that's real. If they go into somebody's house, you, you bring something. Okay, good. You don't have to bring a sacrifice to a person. The lawyer, Panay Rekam, you should not see my face empty handed. Shabazad, that in this. Right, right, out of this context, Rekam also means empty handed? Empty, yeah. Oh. You don't use it. What is it? You don't use that. Rake, you could say Rake is the bottom. The, 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 the car was Rake. The room was Rake. You could say Rake. The room was Rake? A room, empty. Oh, empty. Rake up. Empty, nothing. Right, okay. Shabazad, then in this. Shabazad, then in this, near A, you can see God of the greatness. Ha'ilui of highness. Here, maybe you might need it. Maybe you can have it. God of the great, Ha'ilui highness. The avodah of the service, habirurim of refining the world. Which part we we purify so that we can? Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, you'll see. One second. One second. Refining the world. What did they do? They went to the base of Middash. What did they bring? A cow, a sheep. That's not nice. You don't do that. You don't go into an important place with a sheep. Go to the president of the United States with a cow. A goat. Sha'al Yadeh, that by means of Havas bringing Korban sacrifice, Gashmi, physical, physical sacrifice, Va'ar until Lit Shit, Lit, that too, Deya, opinion. Opinion? Opinion, that's according to one opinion, Achas, one. That according to one opinion, she li dea means according to, I'm sorry, she li until that two opinion, achas one. That was according to one opinion. Tzorich liot, there has to be korban, a sacrifice. Lo mina oh, not from the birds. Birds is a very inexpensive sacrifice. Ella but mina behema from the takao. There was a type of a korban which was called an olaviyorit. If a person had money, he would bring something expensive. If he didn't, then he would bring a, uh, a, a, a meal, just a flower offering, or like cakes. There were different types of cakes. So a bird was more expensive. And a bird was less expensive than a cow. That's this, how it used it now. Usually, this is the word of bird. A oaf is a bird. Yeah. Says that you see the Yeah. True. What? The oaths were above the behemoth. So you had to bring the lowest possible what? thing. Low mean a oath, elo mean a behemoth. 91, 91, the footnote. It says oaths. No, no, that's that, that different. Forget. Yeah. You have to bring out Corbin, being not from a bird, yeah. but from a behemoth. What a, a bird is obviously higher than a behemoth. Birds fly. Birds fly from the air, right? A behemoth is more physical. It's low down. It's the world physical. So therefore, since some people say when you go to the base of Migdash, when you're going to bring an a, a, a sacrifice, so bring a nice sacrifice, bring a bird. It's actually, it's, it's, no, you got to bring a behemoth to the base of Migdash. Why? Bring up birds easier to carry. It's, you know, not that it takes up less space. Everybody's pushing over there. So that's exactly what Hashem wants. Hashem wants it to be packed. And then you bring animals, behemoths, and they're making all sorts of noise. They go to the bathroom. When they slaughter them, there's more blood. Like a big, big mess. So that's what Hashem wants. And the basic thing that she wants physical, to take the physical world and elevate it. Use it for godliness. All you days are by means of this dafka only. Your upana. Can you see my face? Only by means of this. By means of taking the physical, you can see my face. Dilui revealed. Hapenimius inside. 
the locus of godliness. Will be open and in a way to be uh, of seeing. But ah, until the beginners to the level of, we had this before, Yosher, straight, Yechezu, we will see, they will see, Penemo, your face. In other words, our face will be equal to Hashem's face. Hashem's Penemius will be equal to our Penemius. A person will live with Hashem all the time. In other words, you will will have a very miraculous life. You won't want things that are outside of Hashem's will. And you'll do what Hashem wants, and Hashem will give you His blessings. It's not bad. Huh? Mr. Smith? Yes. Good. Zion. Rabbi, the, isn't the service of refinement already completed? And in Mashiach times it will surely be completed already. So what's the point of, of doing Oh, that's a Mashiach's time. Well, how does it say Mashiach that way? He brings good. something else into the <laughs> First of all, why, why does he say Mashiach? Where does it say here Mashiach? Oh, I thought it was something about... Oh, I'm sorry. Not everyone was called. Dafka, Yeru, Oh, it's still, still talking about this. Yes, okay, not only that, number one. Number two, sorry. in the time of Mashiach, there's also going to be Biruin. It's also going to be purifying the world. In the raising of the dead, it says there will be any be world. But in the time of Mashiach, that's one of the main jobs of the Mashiach, is to wake everybody up to do these be ruling. The Mashiach is going to wake up everyone to start doing <coughs> their unique job at refining the world. Right? That, and that's one of the, that's what the thing that's going to bring the Mashiach, eventually the Mashiach, the, uh, bring the raising of the dead. So, like, like the Rebbe pointed out, that one of the jobs of the Mashiach is to bring the Mashiach. <coughs> Even after that, aren't we supposed to continue in a world where we want to go another level? In raising of the dead. After. No, raising of the dead, that's it. That's the ultimate high level. But it says, the Rebbe said, there'll still be mitzvahs, but they won't be mitzvahs as mitzvahs. They'll just be people who want to do the will of Hashem. It won't no, be the but purifying. Won't be a new Playing field, and you start. And no. Raising of the dead, not. But so we're gonna have 15,000 new layers? And I don't know. Never heard of it. Bring, every, raising raising of the dead, dead, there's no more time. Raising of the dead, there's no more time. That's it. Right, so if Hashem decides he wants to make a new world, then he can do what he wants to. But the, after the raising of the dead, there's not gonna be any more time. There'll be pure. Pure. But they're supposed to be. It could be. I never heard of such a thing. Never did, heard of didn't the Rebbe say we already yeah, finished the Biruin? What? Didn't the Rebbe say we already finished the Biruin? The Rebbe said we finished the Biruin in a big way. In a general major way. Now, that's enough for the Mashiach to come. The people have their own individual work to do. People have to do. Which we obviously see. Here is the... Uh, the the Israeli government is trying to give lands to the Arabs, and they're giving them guns. I mean, that's not finished the Beirut. <laughs> Something's wrong. <coughs> but the Rebbe said, nevertheless, that the, I mean, let's just take a small example with the, the thing with Israel and the, and the Goyam. We see things that are happening now that never happened. There's this whole huge governments are falling down in just weeks. Yeah. Right? In just weeks. And it used to be when there like the, 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 the Russian Revolution, there was like millions of people that were killed, millions of people to make a revolution was a whole, the French Revolution. Who knows how many people were killed in the French Revolution? Like 10, and they, 10 people. And then, and then, sorry, they killed 10 people, they killed 15 people, they killed 50 people, they killed 1,000 people, you know. Mm -hmm. 5,000 people, it's like, that. it's terrible. Yeah. In the French Revolution, who knows how many were killed? Probably, you know, 100,000 people. Who knows how many? So look it up and see. But they didn't have the weapons also. Right. <coughs> People were maimed, people were this. Here, people take to the streets and they don't just, you know, kill everybody. People run away, but things are happening nowadays. The, the Israeli government is, you know, the worst possible humanity that you can think of. People usually want to do something that's good for somebody. Here, they do things that are good for nobody at all. It's not good for the earth, not good for anybody. And Hashem makes it that they can't do it. They try to give land to the Arabs, they want to give them their own country, and, and Hashem makes it that they can't do it. All of a sudden, they make 
these two, the, the Hamas and the Sunnis, they make a partnership, and they say, oh, we can't give to them. Why can't you give to them? Give to them also. Well, they're, and they're, yeah, they're, they're worse than the other ones. Or there was like 10 years ago, something like that, two soldiers went into Ramallah. Ramallah was a city, then there was no Hamas. Ramallah went into the city. Well, Ramallah was a city that was owned by the, the Palestinian government. Not Ramallah. Uh, no, no, Ramallah, it's not, oh, Ramallah is not that much farther away from us than, than, uh, than Ramallah. It's not that much farther away. They went in there and, the, and they, they, uh, the, the Palestinian police took them, beat them up. They took them up to a room, beat them up, threw them out the window. The whole entire city turned out to get to these people and to kill them. They turned, tied them up to a, a jeep. They dragged their bodies to the streets. Everybody was putting their hands in their blood. It was a big holiday. The people were so happy. They, they had pictures of people like that. The, the pictures, people were standing in the window, oh, the happiness, oh, they, they attacked these people, they were so happy. And God, it, was, it was insane, but these people are going to make peace. It was even, I saw, there was, there was, uh, I saw an article that there was a, an, an Irish reporter who said, I want you to know that I'm not pro-Israel, and the fact is I don't really like Jews very much. He said, but I was there, he said, I was there when that happened, and the, the crowd, one second the crowd looked at me. And I could tell that they thought that I was Jewish. He said, I've never in my life, I've been all over the world, I've been in Liberia, you know, all these places where they have these mass murders, in Uganda, and they're like, he said, I've never seen such hatred in people's eyes in my entire life. He said, with these people you cannot make peace. So he said, I've never seen such hatred in my life. He said, with these people there's no way you can make peace. Who was he? An Irish? Some Irish, some uh, reporter, news reporter. That's a famous story like that of a, of a Swedish non-Jewish person, volunteer worker. She went and was like pro-Palestine and everything. and lived in the Gaza to help uh, for years. Very, you know, those peace activists. And after she came out, she said, it's... Yeah, but these people, this, but despite all these people, it doesn't help. All these people, they're pro-Palestinian, the whole world is pro-Palestinian. No, she said that she... I understand, once in a while. She went out in the U.S. said, these people, you can't help them. There was a better story. There was a lady, her name was uh, Joan Peters. She was a, uh, some sort of a professor. And she hated the Israelis. She hated them. She was going to write a whole book about how they were... She started writing this book, and she suddenly realized that there was no... that the, the Palestinians were a lying people, the Arabs, they never said anything. And she wrote a book which is called uh, Time From Time Immemorial. It was a book that was like 800 pages and just documented how the Arabs never told any truth ever. They broke every <laughs> agreement they ever made in history. That these people are the most m m m murderous and, and not trustworthy people. And by them, it's even a uh, good quality to be a liar. If you know how to lie properly, yeah. Muhammad lied. It was a very big thing that Muhammad lied to a lot of people. Right? And and she said, no, nobody paid any attention. They tried, even tried to take it off of the, the, uh, the market. The Arabs tried to buy it all up. It's not in the market. Anybody can buy it. It doesn't make any difference. People hate Jews. And the not so bad people hate Jews. The Jews hate the Jews. The Jews themselves hate the Jews. They're the biggest enemy of the Jews. They're the Jews. <laughs> the Zionists, oh, it's our hope. The Zionists, they want, they want to destroy everything. They want to destroy Hashem. They want to destroy the, the country. They want to destroy the Torah. They want to destroy the Jewish people. They want to destroy themselves. <laughs> and it ends up with destroying the Arabs. Right? They're, they're building the Arabs up. So they give them all sorts of arms. And then, now we have to kill them. We have to shoot them. What are we going to do? And if they, were, if they were anywhere normal, they would take care of these people. They would take care of their education. They would take care of this. No, they insist they have to be friends with them. And we're going to be together. We're going to make war. We're going to kick out the, the Zionist uh, oppressors. Who are the Zionist oppressors? Me. <laughs> it's, 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 it's ridiculous. And Hashem takes care of it. And, and it's a way that's never been in the history of the world. These Arabs, we, we put them into Gaza Strip, they're shooting every day they shoot missiles. They don't even talk about it in the papers. Every day they shoot 10 missiles, 5 missiles, some small missiles, homemade missiles, but, but, uh, but sophisticated missiles, the grab missiles, and this missiles, and they don't hit anything. They don't hit anything. They, they shot hundreds and hundreds of missiles already into, into Ashkelon, thousands into Israel. They, when, they, when, they, when the Jews were living in the Gaza Strip, they shot like 7,000 missiles into them. Yeah. The years, and they didn't hear anybody. But there was once a couple, one person, two people were killed or something, which is also a tragedy. But there was thousands of missiles, thousands. And, that was yeah. and nobody gets hit. Nobody gets hurt. Bravo. But who does it? The Arab, no, it was Jews. It was Jews. What happened to the... the uh, the Jew, the, they forced, came up to uh, uh, Sharon, and he said, I have a solution, I'm going to force you to take the land. They didn't even want to take it. 
He forced them to take it. He said, we're moving, we're moving, not sure. Sharon, he, he took the, the troops, and he told everybody they had to get out. They, they moved everybody out by force. By force. Yeah, that's true. I remember. That was sure. in Tishba, right? And now, and now Sharon, they say the, the, it's a terrible joke, but he's in a coma for five years already. Yeah. Just in a coma. He says the land doesn't want to take him. He's dead and he's alive. Which could take huh? He's dead and he's alive. He's between this and, and this. And the government, they're, every, they're trying everything that they can do to look and show the world, look, I see, I hate you, look. And that punches himself, knocks himself out. Everybody's laughing at us and say, oh, yes, uh, you have to give him more land. Well, hit harder, harder. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Rabbi, I remember during the festival, one of the family that died or something was a wedding. There was a, an Arab, uh, no, it was a Jewish guy married an Arab woman. Let's go. Zion. I'll be according to Kongrao. No, did we do? No. Korma Gashmi. No, 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 no. I did that with Europa Knife. Panemius, I'll accuse that. Okay, Zion, I'll be calling now, according to all this. So we are in the days of the Mashiach. That was the point of my whole uh, speech. We are. We see amazing miracles are happening. There have never been such things before. Zion, I'll be according to call and now everything we said before. We've seen catastrophe before, but we haven't really seen miracles like we've seen. Right. What is that now? A nizkar that was mentioned. Le'el above. Yuvan will be understood. Gam also. Hakesher, the connection. The stalkus of the passing away. Rashbi of Rabbi Shem Bayachai. In with Spiros Omer. With Spiros Omer. When did he pass away? He passed on Lag Bomer. That's not nice. Say he passed away on the 18th day of Ia. Lag Bomer always falls on the same day. Lag the 18th of Ia. Right? Ah, and until. Shayom, the day he stopped Kuso, is passing away. Negro is called. Al P, according to Men of Israel, the custom of the Jewish people, Torah E, the custom of the Jews is Torah. What's the custom of the Jews to call it the day the Rabbi Shimon passed away? It was Lag, but named Lag Ba'om. 33rd day of the Omer. Why do they call it the 33rd day of the Omer? Why do they call it the 18th of the year like everything else? Moshe Rabbeinu passed away on the 7th day of Adar. Why? <coughs> Indian, who... What is the meaning of the parentheses? What? The, the meaning of the uh, Israel it, Torah. Right? Was yeah, there's no, there's no law that you have to call it Lag Baomer. Mm -hmm. It's just a custom. But a custom of the Jews is like, it is also considered to be Torah. It was, it's a, if it's a custom that everybody does, then it's considered to be also a custom. There's a, lot, a lot of people have, like in Chabad, we have, our, we have customs in Chabad. You know, how we make a sukkah and how we this. There's others, like the Polish and they have also their customs also. And the Sephardic Jews have their customs. Right? How they, they, they say, uh, and some people say the uh, night of the, of, the, of the Pesach night, they take matzahs, they put it on their shoulder, right? and they walk, they walk around to show that they, like the Jews went out of Egypt with matzahs on the shoulder, some of them do it. Some people wear a kittel, a white garment, in the night of the Seder. Right? Chabad, we don't have not to do it. Right, some people do, some people don't do it. Some people, there's, there's Polish Ecclesiastes, they have white socks, they have a, the Shtraimel. Right? These, things, these things are a, a custom of the Jews, is Torah. And there was a person, there's people that came into Chabad, and they said, you know, my father used to wear a Shtraimel, my uh, this. He used to be kids that learned here in the yeshiva. So my father, the Rebbe said that Chabad didn't come to take on anybody's uh, uh, customs away, only to add things, not to remove. There's a, mm. I heard a story there about, about the, one of the two Persians who came to the Rebbe uh, and the, they asked about Pesach and said that, you know, there's not going to be uh, any rice. So the Rebbe made sure that they had the uh, rice. Rice could be. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Sephardic Jews eat rice on, on Pesach. I'll be calling according to this, you, but we can understand God also the connection between uh, the Pesach of Rabbi Shimon and Bar Yochai with Spiritus of Omer that we call, what is it the custom is to call the day that he passed away? Lag Omer. 33rd day of the Omer. 
<coughs> why? The Indian, who, what's the connection between Rabbi Shimon and the Omer? Why? What's the connection? Indian, who, the Indian is Tavoda, <coughs> that the service, the spirits of Omer, the spirits of Omer. What is this thing of spirits counting the Omer? Counting the Omer is a very bizarre uh, command because we don't really do anything. All you do is just say something. Right? You're just counting something. What are you counting? You're counting time. the day, counting time. But the time is no, not really a thing. I mean, it's not, you can't really put your hands on what is time. You know, what are you counting? You're counting the day coming in, the day coming out. What, what, what did it accomplish? What did you do? You just counted something. It's not like when you make brick as a Muslim. You're blessing. It's also speaking. But your blessing, that's something you did. You actually ate something. Right? Something you did. And you're making a blessing. Thank you, God, for this. Now, what do you do? It's not thanking God for a day. You're counting the day. You're not saying, thank you, God, that I got to run another day of life. Oh, that's nice. You say, no. He was counting, making a mitzvah. I shake you this is the Sabbath, but this is the third day of the Omer, the fifth day of the Omer, the seventh day of the Omer. What does this mean? What are we counting? The, what are we counting? It is Biror, purifying, Hamidos, the emotions, the, the emotions, the nefesh of Bahamis, of your animal soul. What's your animal soul? Another simple word for animal soul is your, your ego, your feeling of yourself. When a person feels that he exists, so he has certain ways of reacting to things. Right? Feel this, right? if, if somebody, uh, there's a bee in the room, a bee that's flying around you, so I don't go like that, right? I go when it's flying around me. I go, all right? I, I, I get emotional when the bee is going to do something to me because it's my... Emotions get all, what is it, if uh, somebody wins a million dollars in the room, maybe the check is there, and yours and your name is it, on it, I don't get so excited, I get a little bit excited, oh, isn't that nice, right, but if my name is on it, ooh, ooh then I'm, I, I'm really excited, why, because yourself is connected with your emotions, right, when a person hasn't gotten emotions, is in, in problems, you know. So any you kind of emotion is... Hello, little... how are you, Mr., uh, Mr., what is it, Farber, is it? There's, there's something wrong with it. He doesn't react to anything. There's no emotions. Right? So all emotions. Yeah, very bad. Yeah. Sometimes a person like gives a, a time of terrible stresses. He loses all emotions. He like blacks out. It's too much. He can't take it. Right? Emotions. Or some people have emotional problem. Some people they get mad when they shouldn't get mad, and they get they, they, they get happy when they shouldn't get happy. But they see somebody get hurt, they like it. It's a mistake. Right? It's a mistake. A lot of people are like that. It's a mistake. People have to work on your emotions. Some people, because of their bad emotions, they become drug addicts. They just they can't take life. Everything bothers them. Everything angers them. They, they can't get along with anybody. Right? Or they have lust for everything. They want everything. They, 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 right? So that's, that's, so that's so, spirit of Omer is a time that's emotions. The time, spirit of Omer is a time when you're supposed to purify your emotions. How do you purify your emotions? You have to work on yourself. Just don't get angry, but really hate everybody. But you just don't you show it. You just don't show it. You get it. So no, you have to work on the source and yourself, right? You have to work on yourself. How do you work on yourself? You start believing in Hashem. When a person believes in Hashem, then he doesn't get so angry, right? He knows. Listen, what am I getting angry for? Hashem is creating me. I'm not the boss of the world, you know. So he did something bad to me. So it, who am I? Right? I'm not so not, not so touchy all the time. So being such a good so Not only that, maybe Hashem wants this to happen. Maybe this is going to be a good thing for me also. What am I getting angry for? But that's not enough faith. It's a high faith. A connection with Hashem. You have to have connection to Hashem. Well, what's the difference faith. between this, the time of the year and all, all other times? Oh, so it's a, this time of the year gives us power to do it the whole rest of the year. But this is a special time. that Rosh Hashanah is a special thing that we can do for the whole rest of the year for doing tshuva and Yom Kippur. But you have to tshuva all the time. Pesach gives you the power to go out of Egypt. You have to go out of Egypt all the time. But this is, gives you the power. So spirits are over the time when you're supposed to concentrate on your mitos, on your personality. And if you look, you see that it says tonight is the night of Netzach Shabahoed, Hoed Shabah Teferis. Right? Do you ever see that? Yeah. Why does it this? Netzach is one aspect of God, and Hoed is another aspect of God. Every night we're refining. That's the part of the tense. That's right. There's seven emotions. Seven emotions. So it says, Ha'a became I would have a question. Yes. Do you have special customs in Jews in Egypt for Pesach? Could be. It's very strange. I'm thinking about it. 
In Egypt? In Egypt, they had a Jews who lived there. Of course, they have to leave. <laughs> yeah, something. Do they have a special custom of no, 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 no. That's a question. No, no. You know. no. Unless they, you know, I don't think so. What's, what's this pilgrimage? Not special just because they live in Egypt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a funny contradiction. <laughs> it's it's, it's forbidden. It's, they say it's, it's forbidden for a Jew to live in Egypt. The custom is they go to the desert and they come. What, what about the, there's a pilgrimage in Tunisia that Jews do for like Boma to an island of some kind? Do you know about this? No, let's go. I don't know about it. The Indian. Oh, do what? Okay. Come on, please, let's go. The Indian rule, the Indian is the Buddhist sphere. So Omar is Bureau of is fixing up the personality of your animal soul. What I do is fixing up your expectations. Okay, your, your expectations, your. Your demands, your desire to control things, your fears, your apprehensions. Ah, for PK, nevertheless, the outer of and exactly the opposite, and inside that because of this, Davka only the mitzvah, so in this mitzvah, only we say at the end, right? There's a whole sort of little paragraph we say. All your days are called. By means of this, by means of this counting and fixing up my animal soul, by means of this, Yushpa, there will flow, Shefa Rav, a big flow of godliness, a big flow of godliness, Bekal Olamot in all of the worlds. Key because. Where did you say Rav was? Huh? Where did you say Rav was? A lot. The call all of them. What does he say? Well, like the same in the base of Mikdash. But what in the Beit of Mikdash they would bring a cow, an animal. Nowadays we don't bring a cow, we don't bring an animal to the base of Mikdash. There's no base of Mikdash. So we can't bring a cow. What do we do? We have to bring our cow. The cow inside of us. The cow in each person has an ox and a cow and a goat and a sheep. Every person has it. And that is our animal soul. Animal soul acts like an animal, automatic. I'm here, I don't, know, I don't care about you, I don't know about you, but I know I'm here. So you react. It says, by means of this, when you purify your animal soul, when you work on your animal soul, and was, let's make it in a simple way. If you have a bad character trait, let's say you ever get angry, if you ever get angry about anything, even about good things, if anything, right things, proper things, you come in your womb, somebody's stealing your thing, right? And you get angry, it's a sign you're worshipping idols. It's a sign you're worshipping idols. Of course, you're supposed to do something. You're not supposed to let somebody that's steal right. from you. Huh? That's right. you're, you're not supposed to let somebody steal from you, of course. Right? And if somebody scratches your car or something like that, you, you can feel bad. Of course, you feel bad. You're losing money. It shouldn't feel good. But they get mad. And they get depressed. And they get this. It's a sign they don't really believe in a shame. Yeah, I would say it depends on which level, but because actually it's, a, it's an attitude what Hashem gave to us, those emotions. Very good, so this is uh, it's very good. Where do we get these bad character traits? Hashem, Hashem gave it to us. Hashem gives it, makes it, there's certain things that will make a person get depressed. Other people won't get depressed, right? Some guy, he loses a business deal, he wants to jump off of a building. Another person loses a business deal, and say, okay, I learned a lesson, and I learned something now, right? Let's go for it. I've met enough, I know I've lost the business, I'm going to lose my life also, what are you nuts? What are you going to jump from a building for? What are you going to get? What's that going to profit? Right? Another person will say, he stole my money, I'm not going to jump off that, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to go. He goes to the mafia and he says, I'm taking on a contract on this guy. Right? People do it. I'm taking on a contract, I want to see him X, I want him out. Right? He gives him $5,000, he kills him. Oh, now I'm happy. Now he's happy. Right? There's other people that they do, I'm going to go drink. He gets loses a business deal, I gotta have a drink, I gotta have a shot, I have to have a this. He goes home and beats his wife. Everybody in a different way. A different way. All of these things are because you don't really trust Hashem. You're not purifying yourself. You're an egotist. You're like, what? Who has these, where did you get these natures from? Why is it this guy wants to drink, and this guy wants to commit suicide, and this guy wants to get me killed, this guy? That's the way Hashem created you. So Hashem gave you all of these bad character traits. He gave it to you. It's like an animal that reacts. That's right, like an animal that just reacts. Yeah. Automatic. You don't ask questions. It's obvious that's what you have to do. Right? And everybody looks and says, wow, why did he do that? By him, it's the most obvious thing in the world. Right? If somebody takes five shekels from you, 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 kill, you kill them. That's it. Take out a knife. The, 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 there's no problem. Right? You get angry, blow up a story, something. Five shekels, come on. 
there are people who do it, sure. You do it. That's the five shekels, the principle. I don't understand. When we took five shekels from me, you didn't have the principle, well, you didn't get mad, right? You took, you took five shekels from other people, and you never took, you never stole from anybody? Yeah, but you know, it's different. It's I didn't mean. You know. So what, why is it? Because that's the animal. So, so who gave us this terrible nature? Hashem. Hashem gave us the animal. Why did He give us the animal? So we'll purify it. That's why He gave it to us. And when we do this, when we purify this, what happens is there's a tremendous flow of godliness into the world. Mr. Smith. A tremendous flow of godliness into the world, but call all of us in all the worlds. Key because avodas, the service of birurim, of refining the world and refining yourself, davka, only, only by refining yourself, magas reaches lamaila, lamaila, to the highest of highs. Magas is like touches, 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 lamaila, lamaila, yala v'yala v'yagia. So the secret is actually in the behemoth because the behemoth right. is an animal that can be tamed. That's right. Otherwise, you could have said nefesh achayo that it can never be tamed. Okay, good, very good. There's some parts of your personality also that you can't tame. There's certain things that you have to get rid of. You can't tame it. Right? If a person really has the desire, to, God forbid, to kill people and kill other people, there's no way you're going to purify it. You just have to get rid of it. You just have to stop doing it. If you're a liar, you're a cheater, you're this. Right? You have to stop doing it. But he brings it under control. Yeah, that, that, there's certain things that you just have to say, no, that's a scafia. Just have to say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's all. You have to find all those other tricks, how not to stop, how to stop doing it. It's still a process of taming, isn't it? Yes. It still is a process of eventually taming your animal soul. Taking the claws off of the lion. Like the lion tamers, they take the claws off of those first. Put false teeth in. <laughs> Rubber teeth. <laughs> How does a bird? Because this, because that's what Hashem created the world. He created a physical world with physical people, with physical low natures. So just because you get mad, don't think that you know I'm right or I'm right. I'm telling you, that it was that. You say, listen, Reza, it could be this guy was terrible and he was awful and he did something bad to me and everything. But the fact of the matter is that I reacted by getting mad. Is so is that I really don't believe in Hashem. And usually, also, what happens is when you get mad at somebody. You don't just get mad at them. You get mad at them for like sometimes years. It's going around in your mind. Dad, first, I should have done this. I want to talk to this little bit. Look what he did to me. Look, because of him, I, my belt is broken. <laughs> right? He took my money. I, I would have been rich now if it wasn't him. It's like his whole life is just this guy's inside of his brain. It's turning off. <laughs> uh, about enough damage he did to you then. What, what, you're thinking about it all day, all night. Right? Yeah. For years, he thinks, right? <laughs> the bad is the guy's bad enough out there, you have to put him in here. It's a sign because you don't really believe in Hashem. You don't believe in Hashem, so your animal takes over. It just takes over and it just goes well. He says, why does Hashem do this? Because when you purify it, it makes a whole new world. It makes a whole new revelation of godliness. And well, that's the whole name of the game. The whole name of the game is to purify your animal, yes. The point is that actually somebody steals something from it. It's not only five shekels; you have big amount. Yes. Yeah. And if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't be without emo, if you would be without emotions, you wouldn't care at all. Yeah. Yeah. But Hashem gave you that emotion that you you are a little bit angry, and actually you even have the right to punish him for that. I, Could be. Not you personally. That's uh, based, you know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and even you. Yes, yes. You're supposed to, not? You can't even uh, allow yeah. with nothing. Yes. Okay. Listen, you can. Getting mad is a human, a human trait, but the fact of the matter is, is that if you get mad, you are sort of an idol. Well, it's like proportional. That's it. So something that's proportional, right? The guy stole five thousand dollars from you, so you take the money back and you punch him, and then he falls on you, punch him again, and he gives and he kick him, and you punch him, and you punch him, and punch him again, right? And he's laying on the ground, and you choke him, you choke him. The guy, ah, you're just angry, just so full of anger, right? You just. Uh, and then after the guy's dead, like you break his arm, you break his other arm, right? You take his eyes out, and you this and that. Hey, what are you doing? What happened? You stole my money. He's never going to do that again. I'll show him. The guy's dead. <laughs> He's dead. What are you doing? What are you, what are you, why'd you kill him? It's not dead enough. It's not enough yet, right? <laughs> Rabbi, it's like uh, Marcos, right? Like, uh, that's right. You're not allowed to. You can't do too much. That's so right. the man, he gets... One more lash, yeah, yeah. and he's... Uh, that's right. right. Kia was a bureau because this service of purifying yourself is the highest of all. This draws down a tremendous flow. Don't overdo it. On the other hand, don't underdo it. Some people, they, they won't take any action at all. Right? The guy stole, you have to do something. You have to go get the guy. 
You have to find him. Turn him into the police. You have to find him. Try to get your money. But don't go crazy. His whole life is looking around for the guy who stole his, his uh, wagon when he was three years old. Shemugu, which is... It says, yes, I'm sorry. Lo, not... What happened with the... What? This draws down the essence of God. You got it down with us? Yeah, yeah. Shefa, a flow. Flow not. Meshem from? No. No. Flow. Oman Shefa draws down Meshem from there. From there. The service of pure, of refining the world. This gets to the highest of highest levels and it draws from there. <coughs> Shefa, a flow of godliness, low or not just light. Shuhu, which is heora, a ray of godliness, Bilvad. El, but Shefa, a flow. Wait, what is Bilvad? Flow. Bilvad alone, only, only, which is a, a ray, only, only, a ray of godliness. El, but Shefa, a flow of godliness. Shahu, which is Mehut Hadavar, the essence of the thing. Mehut Hadavar, right. How did you translate Bilbat? Only? Only. Bilbat is alone. Alone. This is not only a ray of God, but what? It's the essence of Hashem. When you purify yourself, so if you pray and you do mitzvahs, that's wonderful, but it's nothing like purifying your animal soul. Animal soul is difficult, it's hard, very hard, maybe even impossible. You can only do it with the help of Hashem. You can't do it on your own. Impossible. And some people can a little bit. Some people it's possible for them. They don't have really bad drugs. But some people you have to have Hashem. You can't purify, you can't refine yourself without Hashem. Makes you a smarter person. Makes you a more experienced person, yes. It's true. The Yatera is doing even more. What do we say in... in what do we say in the uh, in the, this paragraph after Sfiris Omer? It says it draws down Shefa Rav, a big flow. Filioton, because it is Shefa Rav, a big flow. Loch, and therefore, huh? Yes, Mitzad, because of. Mitzad, because of. Haribui, the I would say the amount, shalo riboy, the multitude. It's such a big flow of godliness. It's the same thing with Israel. That's right, Shafarav, because it's so much. Who nimshach, it draws down. It is drawn down. I'm sorry, the nishma and it flows. But call all the world, all the worlds. What is it in all the worlds? Sometimes you do a mitzvah. It's just in the upper worlds. You get it after you die. But this, when you work on your animal soul, it affects all the worlds. Ah, until the olam hatachton, this physical world. Hatachton, low, lowest. Ub olam gufa, in this world itself, lamakom to the place. Hachi tachton, the most low. She'en, if there is not tachton, lower. Lamata mimenu, below it. There's nothing lower than. This physical world. This physical world is the lowest place because here you can go against Hashem totally. You can go against yourself. Yeish lomar, we can say, I should say, that this is. Hakesher, the connection, the Amaya Sphira, of the days of the Sphira, Ubaham Gufa, and in them it themselves, and in them themselves, and in, those, in the days of the Sphira themselves, the Yom Lag, the 33rd day of Yom, which is the soul to the end, I'll explain this tomorrow, the Tashlum. And the completion, ha'avodah of the service of Spiritus Omer, the ikri amidos and the main emotions. Because what what is Spiritus Omer? The Spiritus Omer is is 
hod uh, uh, You know, you have a the days. That's actually what hod shabahod is the outside of the emotions. I'll explain that to you tomorrow. But that's you know, the spirit of Allah again, all of the omers of the world. What's the connection of the spirit of Omar, especially Lag Omar, to the istalkus, to the passing away of the Rashbi? Why? He because avod is so the service. Shall a Rashbi of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Hayatal was the Rafe, like we said before, to heal. To heal. Heal. Ubatel and to. Rafe to heal, yes. Ubatel and to negate. At hamachitza, the divisions, the separations. Mechitza is the separation. Shabain, which is between kol and yanim, all of the things. Separation between people. Separation between us and Hashem. To take away all these separations, ulam shich, and to draw down. Of course, the separation between good and bad. There was a separation, but separation between. Us good and better, Ulam Sheikh had to draw down Mila Maila Maila from very, very high until Lamata Mata below, below. What is below, below? In the animal soul. No. Mibachina from the level of Eitan, this level which was called. Eitan, remember that level of Eitan? The level which is Yechida, to take this level of Eitan and draw it down. Bebechinat, and the level of Or, it's earth. Torah Shemalpeh. Or, Torah Shemalpeh, in the Zikin, damages. Well, we have one more minute, one more minute, we have a minute. This is the, this is the main thing. The Indian Zen, and this topic, Omid stands. Begilu in a revealed way, namely what? To reveal the highest into the lowest. That's what we say in Spirits of Omer. Like purifying our animal soul, it says, Yishpa Shefarah. <coughs> he draws out a tremendous revelation. And that's what Rabbi Shimon did. He drew down into the lowest things, into the damages. He drew down the highest thing, which was the level of Eitan. This is all revealed by Yom Yistalkuto on the day that Rabbi Shimon passed away and Lad the Omer. As we're going to see, God willing, tomorrow. tomorrow.